Uh, Adesio is a uh, long-standing um, associate of the Lincoln Institute. In 2001, he actually gave a presentation on the same topic here. Uh, and it's interesting that this was just, just after the book had been, uh, the uh, Mystery of Capital has just been published. This is 2000, I believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be interesting to compare notes of this time with uh, eight years ago, right? Yeah. And th by the way, that presentation was actually uh, published uh, in a landline piece, uh, the, um, the main ideas there, so whoever wants to, to uh, uh, consult there. Uh, he's a, um, Adez is currently a visiting fellow here with us. Uh, he's spending the semester and uh, preparing a book on the, um, on the uh, critical essays on uh, Hernando de Soto. Uh, we expect this to be ready by, by July sometime. Yeah. And um, he's putting together a comprehensive collection of, uh, of articles of people who have wrote, uh, written about uh, Hernando de Soto. And he's also preparing a policy focus report for us on regularization policies experienced in Latin America. Uh, Adesio uh, holds a uh, PhD from Warwick University, and he's a Brazilian scholar, but um, who has been spending quite some time in in the UK. But he doesn't have so far the accent <laughs> that Mangabeira Unger has in Portuguese. So <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Mangabeira Unger is, is the uh, long-standing professor here at Harvard, uh, also a lawyer. He is currently also a uh, associate to DPU, the uh, Development uh, Planning Unit of University College in London, where he teaches when his well, what time <laughs> when he has some time left out of, out of his busy agenda, globe trotting the consulting. Uh, 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 oh, he has been around in quite quite a few places. He has also uh, recently been invited as the United Nations Habitat Advisory Group on Forced Eviction. And uh, he has written extensively on social legal dimensions on the process of urban development internationally, and particularly regarding on the social legal implications of the phenomenon of informal development. Uh, in 2003, he was uh, director of the land affairs for the recently created Ministry of, of the Cities in Brazil in which position he um, formulated and coordinated, the, I guess, the first Brazilian national program to support sustainable land regularization. And where I believe his influence has been even higher than the Soros in shaping the content of that program. <laughs> so uh, in today's presentation, he will take stock of, of the Soros' influence on the land tenure and other regularization programs of informal occupation. So uh, with much ado, with the floor is yours. Thank you. Break your Thank you. Thank you all for coming. What I thought I should present to you, I instead of focusing on any specific issues, I'll be <coughs> providing quite a general overview of the debate initiated by Hernando de Soto's ideas on how to tackle the phenomenon of informal development. And my main intention is to show to you how complex this discussion is. So that's why instead of focusing on specific issues, I'll be presenting you this panorama of uh, De Soto's agenda for economic development. And I have organized my talk in three parts. I'll present very briefly the basic aspects of uh, De Soto's agenda for economic development. Then I'll organize some of the main criticisms resulting initially from, from the theoretical analysis of De Soto's books and more recently, also from the empir empirical research that has been undertaken in many countries where De Soto-inspired policies have been implemented. And finally, I'll offer you, if I have time, some basic elements for a different approach. I don't think it's necessary to stress, but I'll do that anyway. You see the importance of a critical assessment of De Soto's ideas, not only because of the global relevance of this debate on informal development, not only in Latin America, but also in Africa, Asia, Eastern Europe, the Middle East, you know, the rates of informal development are very high these days, but also considering De Soto's extraordinary contribution to this debate. De Soto's ideas have been extremely popular as well as, uh, as long-standing. We've been discussing De Soto's ideas for the last 20 years. His first book was published back in 1986, 
and ever since we've been discussing the Soto's influence. But above all, I think the main reason why we should be discussing the Soto is that unlike other thinkers such as Amartya Zen and Muhammad Yunus, the Soto's ideas have been translated into large-scale policies. They've been affecting people's lives internationally in a very strong, in a very direct way. And I'll be using the case of Peru as a reference throughout my talk because this is the main paradigm we have where De Soto implemented initially his uh, large-scale program and this model has been replicated elsewhere. <coughs> and the underlying questions that I'll be addressing are, are the main appealings behind De Soto's ideas? Basically, they come across as a simple solution as well as the numbers he's talking about, especially considering the amount of so-called dead capital, which I'll be discussing here. Are these, uh, these factors reliable? Secondly, the highly costly De Soto-inspired public policies in Peru, Albania, and elsewhere, have they been fully justified? I mean, have the enormous investment of public and private resources has been fully justified? And finally, has the De Soto agenda for economic development been expressed in the right terms, or has it been a smoke screen to hide deeper issues, right? So these are the three main questions that I'll be addressing. So as you may know, De Soto wrote two bestsellers on development economics. Initially, The Other Path, 1986, translated in 1989, and then The Mystery of Capital, written in Spanish and translated <coughs> into English on the same year, in 2000, you know, and available in over 30 countries, 12 languages. So it's really quite a rare feat. It's two major um, bestsellers on development economics with several dimensions being discussed. I mean, the recognition of the extent, dynamics, innovations of informal processes, both housing and business. This is quite interesting. The sort is not only talking about informal housing, but he's also talking about informal businesses, placing, placing emphasis on actual and potential economic value of the assets generated through informal processes, a very strong a uh, critique of the overall legal system, including the dynamics of the judicial systems in the registration systems in place in developing and transitional countries, and also a powerful critique of bureaucratic administration and corruption in developing and transitional countries. But of course, the more, the more discussed dimension of his work has been his argument that the organization of property rights is the means, is the most significant way to promote economic development in both developing and transitional countries. So De Soto seems to propose quite a simple solution. Governments should remove all the existing legal and institutional barriers so as to guarantee the materialization, recognition, and circulation of economic assets that have been produced through informal housing and business practices in developing countries. So basically, he's saying that governments should leverage what capital assets already exist uh, and increase the participation of mortgages in the, in the gross national products. So this is basically the De Soto formula, which seems to be quite simple. And, and this simplicity is one of the most appealing factors that have uh, made uh, the sort of uh, proposal so popular globally. So, uh, in this context, titling, land titling, and registration are the means to promote security of tenure for those people living informally in consolidated urban areas. That would, according to the Soto, lead to access to official credit, make it possible for people to finance progressive investment on housing and business consolidation, revive and maximize what he calculated as $9.3 trillion of dead capital, almost $7,000 trillion being dead capital invested in informal property, as well as making it possible the integration of the urban poor into the market and thus eradicate <coughs> urban poverty. So this is this, the, the sort of promise, right, basically here. 